Who's here? What's up, Grant Cardone? Dallas, What's up, my man? Good, to, Good see to see you. Man. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. He's in town for Thanks that for Dodgers Astros game. That you mean that Dodgers whoop ass? <laughs> <laughs> Don't start trouble in Los Angeles. So I got a question for you. Yeah. How long you been an Astros fan? Uh, ever since I started investing in, 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 uh, in <laughs> Houston real estate. Number Grant, one, honest Grant, answer. Grant is I'm smart. Honest. He knows that most business deals are not done in the conference room. They're done, they're done you know, in the they're, dugout. Or they're, they're done, done in the dugout. They're done in the stadium. They're so done. did you get any business out of being there? What were you, right on the, were you right row one? Look, the dude, the dude that sold me the tickets, right? I bought him through StubHub. Yeah. And so I sit down, we get there early, we're all excited. It's been my dream, my dream to be at a World Series game, much less game seven, you know? So uh, the guy comes in, he's like, you bought those tickets for me, his name's Barry. Awesome dude. And uh, he's an uh, uh, in, uh, entertainment transaction guy. And he says, you bought these tickets for me. And he said, you paid a fair price. <laughs> he says, I want you to come back next year as my guest, any game. So really, Show them this, by the way. Re- really awesome. You're going to 10X whatever you paid on the ticket in new Houston real estate. Yeah. Ando, get out. Get, 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 get. I've never let my dogs inside because then they always want to come in. So we're going to talk. We're about yeah, to do I, a... I, I've been to your house a, a million times, bro. You've been here? Yeah. You haven't been here. Yeah. Everybody's been to your house. <laughs> You've been through virtually through my podcast. We're getting ready to go record live and doing a podcast. We're going to talk about how to invest your money. We're talking on how to invest your money. This is an investment master in lots of areas, real estate. Is that what people you think when they think of you as an investor? Is it real estate or sales? That's I think like, I think I think people probably think about me as a sales guy first. You know the real. But estate. they don't know how big you are in real estate. It's been kind of quiet. You know, I, I, I've been helping companies grow their sales for 25 years, and taking the money from that and investing it into this, to this hard asset real estate game. Right. What do you like better, sales or real estate? Well, I love or are they people. Just, you know, when you buy real estate, you're not. You don't get the satisfaction of helping somebody right away. Right. And with the, with the sales, you know, there's two young dudes that come up to me oh, no. in Beverly Hills and say, man, I was cold calling, you helped me. Or, you know, we work with a company like Ashley Furniture. It's got 60,000 employees, a lot of them on the floor selling stuff, handling phone calls. Not everything's done on the internet, as you know, you know. So, you know, the sales thing, when you're helping somebody increase their income. Right. You're changing a guy's life. What's you know, the best story hope? you've seen? Rags to riches from using your sales stuff. Oh, Ty, there's so many. One that stands out. I mean, I, there's every every day I get a hundred. Like literally, yeah. every day I get a hundred people saying, "Hey, you, you you made it possible." Introverts, you made it possible for me to pick up a phone. Because yeah, introverted people, sales can be tough. Well, tough going in, right? What or, do you teach them though? Like, what's even the, the, extrovert, what's the, core the extrovert, thing, extrovert that talks too much. Right. You know, like you're talking past the sale, you're talking past the close. You don't, you ask a lot of questions, you never get any answers. Yeah. So basically what I did was I got in sales when I was 20, 17, 18 years old. Yeah. When I was 25, I was, I was forced into a sales job after an accounting degree. The seven years between yeah. 17 and 25, I hated sales. Every sales job I had, I was terrible at. Yeah. Got out of college with an accounting degree. Yeah. And couldn't get a job. One out of four people were unemployed where I lived. And the only Where job, was that? Where'd you uh, grow? In Lake Charles, Louisiana, a refinery town. Oh, that's right. You're in Louisiana. Nicholas Cage. I'm a Southern boy. Zach, how come every Nicholas Cage movie's in Louisiana? I've Except noticed that. Leaving Las Vegas. That's why. <laughs> that's why. Like last night, that pitcher that hit the three batters. Yeah. That's what we do in, down there in the <laughs> South. Was he from Louisiana? We scared the people. We hit him. <laughs> that's my place. Yeah, that's my place. Then get off that Film plate. Zach. We got Zach here. So what I was going to tell you on that was, uh, was, I got in the sales job in the car industry. Right. You don't go to get an accounting degree to sell cars. Right. So I hated the job. Well, why'd you go to cars then? Because it's the only job I could get. Only thing you could I was find. in the unemployment line. Yeah. And my uncle came and grabbed me and said, no, you're not going to pick that check up. You're never going to take a check from there, dude. You're going to go sell cars. I said, I didn't go to college to sell yeah. cars. He says, you didn't go to college to stand in this line either. Yeah. So sure enough, he got me a job at a car dealership. And Uncles are good. My uncle is the one who helped me get started. He gave me advice. You know what his advice yeah. was? Yeah. I was sleeping on a couch in a mobile home. He said, Ty, go into sales. And because he said, you, I didn't have a college degree. And he said, I said, what kind of sales? He said, the two that I know you can do is car sales, because that's what he had done, or financial services. And I said, oh, I don't want to do car sales like you, so I want yeah, financial yeah, services. Yeah, yeah. I hated car sales. 
Car sales is rough. They and work those dudes. I, I borrowed three grand from my mom. I said, look, I don't know what I'm doing. I hate this job. And I was like, I can't quit another job. I'd, I'd lost five jobs. And I, and I just come out of a treatment center for drug addiction. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't lose another, another job. I got to turn my life around. This is a shot, you know. And, and a guy gave me a tape. And I listened to it. I'm like, oh, wow, there's a way to do this. Yeah. So I don't have to sound cheesy. And I don't have to manipulate. It was a sales kind of technique? It was a sales guy. What was it? You remember the name? Uh, his name was Jackie Cooper. He was just an automotive guy. And so I listened to that tape. I ordered his stuff. I borrowed three grand from my mom. Okay. And that's that knowledge thing, the knowledge, man, to know something. Knowledge. Like knowledge. <laughs> knowledge. And, uh, so you t- and then so I you became got, so, a good salesman. So did the tapes help you a lot? Dude, so, so much. What was, what was he teaching? They, they were 12 beta. They, they, he was teaching old tactics. Like old school Manipulation, closing, closing <laughs> hammering, control, manipulation. So, but, but. I needed to learn something. Right, something and, better and, than nothing. And then when I got good at what he was doing, which wasn't really, it wasn't like bad manipulation. It was right. just like how to control a cycle, right? Yeah. Well, then I started really, it gave me a chance to get committed to, to becoming a professional salesperson. And then I started figuring out how to get rid of all the manipulation stuff and all the stuff that salespeople hate. You know, I, I got good at his stuff. But you can only get so good at manipulation before you realize realize that, dude, you're manipulating. Right. And and what happened was my productivity dropped. You think because didn't you want, didn't believe what you were doing? I, I, exactly. Yeah. I, that's the first rule for me for sales. If you really believe, because people buy off energy, they buy off confidence. Uh-huh. It's not just logical sale. So if yeah. you don't believe, I I was selling health insurance when I first started financial services. And I, w- I became like number three in the whole US for that company. But then I read through what I was selling and I'm like, this is crap. And I stopped being a good salesman. Yeah, exactly. And I switched over to a better product and then I went back. So yeah, believe yeah, in what yeah. you sell. Yeah, yeah. So you and, lost and have the motivation so, because so what it was crappy. Was my productivity dropped. Yeah. And I started really looking. I, was, I became a student, of, really a, an observer. Yeah. And, and, and that, I was 28 years old and started looking at, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rewrite this sales thing. I was studying Tracy and Tom Hopkins and all those guys, all the old guys, right? And I'm like, I'm gonna change Brian the way- Brian Tracy? Yeah. Yeah. I, I said, I'm, gonna, don't know. I'm yeah. gonna change the way selling happens. Okay. And so I started looking at how could I shorten the cycle? Because you created your own system, yeah, basically. Exactly. It, yeah, exactly. This is back in the day where you're like, the longer you spend with the customer, the better off you are. Right. And I'm like, I don't have time, dude. Yes. My dad died when I was 10, older brother died when I was 20. I, I, I'm in a rush. I'm yeah. like, I don't have time. I was spending four hours with the customer to make 300 bucks. I'm like, this is stupid. Yeah. And, and I was the only guy saying that. I'm like, why would I want to spend, is that a bad gaming board? Dude, this is my favorite you game. Play? Right? We oh, have to play. I love the game. Well, I've been playing since my grandma. You know Brad Lee, right? Yeah. He owes me 610 right now. <laughs> Six, I'm assuming that's 600,000. 610, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> here, come back. We got a whole bunch of people waiting in here. Yo. Everybody went in here so they wouldn't be in our shot, but we thought we would get These here. These are t- Taz's children. <laughs> <laughs> this is the d- adopted family and right one here. Of your we got, children, <laughs> got Ryan. Yeah, well, I got Captain Ryan. He, yeah. Hey, we got a lot of people in here. He's the best looking in here, you know. So. <laughs> Ron, Captain yeah. Ryan, are you talking to the third person about yourself? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys brought me a little prize or what is this? A present? It's a That's gift. Right. Did I win something? It's oh, a Versace. Thing for uh oh. Everything you provided us with, all the, the opportunities, value. man, the value. So this is the least we can do. What do we got? Boom. Uh oh. That's right. Oh, is that a robe? <laughs> that's a, that's oh, a robe. he gave me the um, yeah, Hugh Hefner Versace robe. This thing right here, my man. You throw this on right after a shower. <laughs> Samir, do you walk around with that? Please tell me you do. I have a blue one. <laughs> Let me just tell you a rule I have. If another man wears my robe, I ain't never wearing it again. You can take it home with you. But he's got the bulletproof. You need a bulletproof? No, he was saying he wants to wear it in my interview, and I'm like... No, no, you wear it in the interview of me. Okay. Okay. Uh, I might stick with this, but I like the, uh, I like the plan. I'll have to do a series. Zach, Zach should walk by with this. <laughs> and Zach, Zach should go, guess what I have on under here. By the way, Samir, also in grants programs. Yes, they told me. They just, they're just they learning. Learning from everybody. More people you learn. Everybody's got a different angle on life. 
Grant has his techniques. I've got a couple techniques. Make war with a multitude of counselors, not just one. Mm -hmm. Some people are looking for the but one. But don't get so many, you don't know what to do. Yeah, well, good news is there aren't that many people you can learn from. So even if you try, most people don't know what they're talking about. So there's a few. I'd rather have one bad general than two brilliant ones. Yeah, but I'd rather have two badass armies. Because look at Congress. Yeah, con how do you explain I'm Congress? <laughs> Zach trumped us both. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go do this yeah, interview. Let's do it. Let's, let's do, do it. This. Let's do it, man. Let's do our. We were doing a little talking, and let's talk into here. Um, so, Grant, you were telling me your story. What was the day that changed it all? You remember I one did, day? Did, I needed, I needed, a, I needed a path to walk down, right? I got to know where I'm going. You can't have confidence without having a path. I got to know where I'm going. What, what, do you remember a day in your life that changed your life? Like you told me you were drug addiction. You, yeah, were, yeah, yeah. you were unemployed. Well, uh, kind of when the counselor told me I'd, I was coming back, man, that I'd never make it. He's like, dude, you'll never make it. Give really? Up, give up the book idea. I'm leaving the treatment center. He says, give up the book so idea. So the rehabilitation. Give up the rich thing. Dude, all these, these rehab centers, they, 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 they kill people. Huh. They kill people. They destroy people. So how'd you get the confidence when they weren't giving you Because I walked out of there and said, hey, dude, I'll never see you again. You will see me one day, bro. You will see me everywhere. So you laugh I love last. It. I, I love the, the skeptic. They, they help me. Yeah. They're, they're fuel. They have tremendous energy. Yeah. Let's go. Okay, welcome everybody. Ty Lopez Show. Guess who showed up at the house? We got Grant Cardone. We're talking about how he makes over two hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars a day. I didn't even know I made that. That's not, I know. I had I know, to make I, him do it on the calculator. And I, over seven hundred million bucks in real estate. So million. listen, that's a good number. Sounds it's good. almost Sounds a B. Better ones. He's almost. That's almost the three comma club. So what we're gonna be talking about? Who gets the B first, me or you? Um, that's that, that, that it sounds would be like a great you, title. That that would be a great title. That would be a great title. We'll dude. see. We'll and see. Dude, what if we documented it? Like, like, but that would be a comp. I don't like to build no, no, we, off pure we, we You're my friend. I don't want to only no, we, be competing. We would be inspiring one another. It's okay. drafting. Drafting's what about a, a science. We got to get to a T. Whoever's at a T first. Uh, no, that, Apple. That, that, that's Steve Jobs, Apple. He's going to be the potentially the first no, no. trillion dollar business. No, that's, that's how, the that, wager is whoever gets to a T first. Nah, the other person has to give him. That's, that's not even real for me. I can't, I can't even think with that. Grant, why? That, don't I, be I, constrained. I, I am constrained at this very moment. <laughs> I just want to tell you, I have a mad, mad amount of admiration for what you've built. Well, me too. And, and, and Likewise. You've, you've really pioneered. Let me just give you the, let me give you the compliment before you. All right. Okay. And cut let's me see, off. That's how see, confident he let's is. Let's see if I can get him to blush up. So. Um, dude, just a mad, con you know, respect for what you've done online, how you built your name out, how you've really pioneered a lot of stuff that's going on online. Like, a re really a lot of admiration for it, for that. Well, I appreciate that. Now, uh, all this other bullshit you do, I don't know about, but I do have... <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. let's talk. We're going to be talking about practical tips. No, I want to give people. Let's talk about goals. Let's talk about goals. Let's talk, let's start with because, that. Goals. Because the trillion. How do you set goals? Well, no, it's just so far out there. Like, like, like I have to have something I can get to. That I, yes. that I can eat, right? Yes. So, so, and I know you agree with that. Like, totally. The trillion, when you say a trillion, I'm like, dude, like, I, I'm not in the music business. I'm not in the TV business. I'm not. I just like to pull his leg because he got it. This is a great book, The 10X Rule. So I'm like, what if we change this? I'm going to just add two zeros, the thousand X rule. Because no, no. he wants a billion. A thousand billion is a trillion. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you, dude. But, 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 but I also think that, like, you know. Yeah, you want to have Elon realistic Musk, goals. Well, not look, my goals are not even realistic. They're stretch goals, but, but they're but, still but realistic. For you to add a T to that. That was a joke. Okay. Oh, it's but like, it's I, like, here's what I believe on that. Yeah. You have vision. You got good air, though, dude. I like you. You have hair. a vision for life. <laughs> that's what I do now. I don't know about the trillion. That's some good hair. Okay. <laughs> Nothing. Zach, Zach's yeah. envious. Thank you. No, you got to have vision. Your vision can be huge. Your vision could be to be a billionaire, a trillionaire. Yeah, but yeah, like yeah, Grant yeah, says, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to break it down in mini goals. Yeah. Today, I always say, I just tweeted today. You got to optimize today because to me, today you pretty much can count on you're going to make it to the end of the day. Good chance. If you start projecting, I meet people who are like, what's my 30 year, you know, my 30 year goals? I'm like, that's too far off. Mm -hmm. So what do you have? Do you write down so, goals in the morning? I do. I do. Notepad. I write them down on a notepad with a, with a pen. Daily? Seven, every morning yep. and at night. Okay. And any time I lose. Any time. But what about when you win? Do you uh, well, do a gratitude? I, 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 I write thing? my successes every day too. Okay. So I write in the morning when I wake up. First thing I do when I wake up in the morning 
Yep. <laughs> That's good. You see, we're, we're all control freaks, dude. No, we're going to get you. you get, no, he's got yeah. his viewers here. We've yeah, got to get them yeah, to listen yeah, to. Yeah. So, um, so I write them down in the morning and they change, by the way. Like, okay. Like I went on an aerial interdiction uh, combat mission. An you know aerial? In, so you were like. Interdiction means to, to yeah. lay down so much fire you suppress the enemy. So okay. I took all my guys, put them on helicopters. Okay. We, with the, with the, they have rails outside the choppers. Yeah. We all had AR-15s. And is this on a video game or you actually no, did No, this is real, dude. This, this is real. Real. This okay. in a video game. If I can, and give me the helicopter. So we're on the helicopter. We're running about 60 miles an hour. We're shooting. We're laying down fire on targets. What state were you in? I'm in Florida, man. You were doing that in Florida? Yeah, yeah. So we just did this two weeks ago. Okay. And um, it, the point of it is to lay down so much fire on that target, right, that it can't move. And it just reminded me of the, the, the importance of having a goal. And it reminded me, years ago, I used to write in the morning, I own a helicopter. I, I wrote okay. this when I was in La Jolla probably 25 years ago. Uh, I just, I had this thing. I want, you know, some of the things you just want, you don't know where they're coming from. Yes. I dropped it out years ago. Okay. When I got on that helicopter, I'm like, I want to. I want to fly a helicopter. Huh. Like, I have no interest in flying my plane. I want to sit in the back, but I would like to pilot a helicopter. So you've got a Gulf Stream, but now the new stretch goal is not only have a helicopter, but pilot a helicopter. I want to pilot that chopper. I got talked out of it because some guy said, man, it's the hardest thing you can do. It is hard. Is. Sometimes when I'm in a helicopter, that's why I only take helicopters with two pilots. Because you get one, I'm like, if this guy has a heart attack... I can't land this thing. They've got these little yeah, paddles. Yeah, yeah. By the way, is Drop this in or no? No, that, that's, that's in the frame. Let's yeah, so, pull it back. Pull it back. No, I got, actually, we got it. We're going to go right here. Dude, is, that, that, is it out of it now? Yeah, I mean, it's right behind the other one. So. Yeah, but this. let me look at the frame real fast. Oh, my God. Keep talking, Grant. Oh, my God. Guys, guys. I'm a perfectionist guy, for you. This guy, I thought I was bad. You're making me feel good. I thought I had character defects. Shit. <laughs> now, now you I met me. Don't. Put it back on this corner where I, where I had it. Okay, that's my goddamn camera. <laughs> Grant, I'm giving you a better angle. Is it? Dude, all my angles are good. I don't have a good side. <laughs> Grant, what about this? You know, that's my famous line when I do a Grant selfie. Grant is a character. When I do a selfie with somebody, I'm like, I know I look good. Yeah, huh? do it a yeah, little maybe more. Yeah, maybe get the line. But see, out, you got you that know? thing in the way. Yeah, that ain't my thing. That's your thing. Angle good. Did we both characters, man? Did they ought to do a movie about us, man? What would the movie we're, be called? We're, we're like the new cowboys. We're like I call it the Internet Mafia. Mm -hmm. Yesterday I was with two guys. They both do about a billion in online sales, and I took a picture and I was like, "Welcome to the Internet Mafia." There is, there's no Illum You believe in the Illuminati? I'm dealing with this planet, bro. I'm dealing with what I can see, the, what's in front of me. I mean, I don't have time for a bunch of conspiracy stuff, even though I don't think the shooter at Mandalay was the shooter. You don't? I was there. Okay. I was there that night. He, he lived below me for four, four days. We checked in the same day. So you didn't know him. He just happened to be below you. He was below me on the same side of the hotel. But you don't bring, I'm from Louisiana, you don't bring 26 weapons to go hunting. Right. Unless you got 26 people. Okay. okay? You bring 26 weapons because you you're selling stuff. I'm a salesman. Okay. I'm a car dealer. I got lots of cars. I don't bring one or two. You going on a trip, you bring one car, maybe two. You okay. going on a shooting fest, you bring one or two, maybe four guns. Yeah. You don't bring 26. You bring 26 because you want to sell stuff. Okay. <laughs> on that non-conspiracy. What is the topic anyway? No, let's go, let's go. I don't go down conspiracies very much. We're not going down but conspiracies, but here's one of the biggest conspiracy theories ever. All right, so going back, bring I, this I back. had his attention. This dude in the back, he's like, man, I'm listening to him. Now. Yeah, my staff and is back way, here by going, the way, what? In every, in every Patsy situation, there's always a witness. Right. Okay? The witness in this case comes down the hall. 200 rounds get fired down those hallways, okay? Let me tell you, you fire 200 rounds of AR, uh, what is that, a 223? Yeah. Okay, you don't scrape a guy, dude. Right. Okay, that hallway, that hallway. So, so it's so convenient to have one guy that gets a little scrape. To tell, oh, yeah, he was the one that did it. You need a witness for the Patsy. You know, you know that I, I was there at that. We were at the same conference, yeah, and, yeah, and we left. jetted out. Yeah. We drove by the Las Ve Mandalay Bay in that country. It was like a country music festival. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we got on the plane. And when we landed, basically, a little after we landed, on, huh? it was going on. And I'm like, We were playing Sheesh. poker. We, we, at 
we left the, the foundation room. We had 100 people up there for a real estate investment um, uh, dinner. Yeah. I told Elaine at 9.58, because I looked at my watch, baby, it's two minutes before 10. I'm leaving before anybody else. Okay, let's grab Kevin Harrington, Shark Tank Harrington, and a handful of other people that want to go play poker. Let's get a table, and let's play some poker. Mm -hmm. Everybody had a $500 buy-in, and I was going to wipe everybody out. I told everybody going in, <laughs> it's fucking going to be ugly. One lesson you're going to learn from Grant is you need confidence. I'm Grant gonna is extremely confident. I'm going to whack everybody. You got to go in believing you're going to. So, so we're literally going at 9.58. This thing goes off at 10 o'clock. Yep. Okay, at 10 o'clock, he starts doing his deal, whoever. And um, we're going down. We literally passed by his, his uh, floor. We got down. Kevin Harrington won the first, the first uh, hand. Mm -hmm. And literally two minutes later, the energy in the whole place just changed. Yeah. And it got intense for the, the next. world. And there was a shooting yesterday in Colorado. That's terrible. There's, and there was a, people running people over in New York. So one of the things, you know, if you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you have five things that you need to feel fulfilled and happy. Yeah. The bottom is physiological, physical needs. The second thing is safety. The third thing is love. The fourth is respect. And the fifth is self-actualization. But people don't realize, and while we're talking about money, mm -hmm. is that the bottom two, the found, money doesn't make you happy, but the lack of money removes the possibility you'll be able to do the top three. The number one cause of divorce, Money. Financial issues. Yeah, yeah. And safety is a big one, and we see that in the world, and you can't completely control the world. People are shooting, and if, if they take away guns in London, Dude, they money, stab money, people. Money, money didn't matter that night. So we got, we got trapped from 10 o'clock till 8.30 in the morning. It didn't matter how much money That's you right. had. Safety is more but, important. But we were separated. Captain Ryan was on the 48th. He was stuck there, 38th or whatever you were. And I'm, on the, on the, on the, I'm stuck with 250 people. Yeah. Nobody was armed. Yeah, except me. Oh, you yeah, okay? Yeah. Nobody was protected. Yeah, I'm like we're in a room for ten hours, trapped. Yep. How do I know that 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 they're not down there with me? Yeah. So like we live in a world right now that's dangerous. Like yeah. uh, you know, you people in California, y'all don't want to carry anything. Uh, then you know. I want to. It's just a pain in the butt to get a concealed carry. So, so I mean, I got guns in this house, here. but I So, yeah. uh, all these soft targets. I go to the Dodger game last night. Inside the stadium is not a problem. Me and my wife, every time we go into any environment, we're like, what's our plan here? Right. We always make a decision. Here's our plan. Whether we're at the theater, the store, we need a plan. Everybody needs a plan. You, you guys, you guys are, oh, I can't believe that happened. It's happening all the time. Wake up. Yeah. Same thing about your finances. That's why what me and you do is really waking people up. Yeah. Until they watch so much of it, they're just going, you know. What's the number one thing? You, you reach a lot of people. What do you see people, number one financial illiteracy problem? Yeah. Like, what's the angle they're so, all these wrong no, ones? Number one, buy, buying $2,000 tennis shoes. Fucking dumbest thing you can do. Ha! <laughs> now, hey, let me just say. Dumbest thing you can do. Let me just say. Are you going to clip that out? No, I'm going to keep it all okay, in. Okay, okay. He's making fun of me for spending two grand on shoes. No, How no, much did I'm you? Not, no, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. You're no, not talking about you, me. You can, he can do it, guys. Okay? But I, you do, guys it, I do it as part of a you social media outreach. No, no, you can do it. Because how much did you spend you. on the Astro tickets? Yeah, I spent a lot of money. Let's the, get, most no, money not, the most money are, ever spent. You can call me out, but we can have reciprocal call out. And then we still call each other. Wait, let's, let's say the number. These, 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 were, these were 2,000. <laughs> what was the... What one, was, 117. Okay, 117. 128 with everything. Now, the only it was thing the about... Most, most expensive World Series tickets ever. Yeah, last year I spent 55,000, and I was the top one. I bought the top two. I bust your ass. But here's year. the thing. And we won. Now, did y'all win? But now the game... You didn't win. You're from Louisiana and Florida. What do you mean I didn't win, dude? The Astros are your today. team. Huh? But let me tell you why he's smart. Grant is smart because he bought those tickets. It was actually an investment. Totally. Because his Astro, he's doing deals in Houston, and, all, and it's hard to get yeah, good yeah, real estate yeah, deals. Yeah, yeah. And now they see him on the front row of the Astro. Obscurity, you, obscurity is why you will fail. Yeah, right? you need to be known. Look, look, how, look how successful this dude is. People know him. Everybody knows Ty. Like him, hate him, don't know who he is, what he is. More people ask me, dude, what's the deal? With what's that? But they're asking. I said, you know, the deal is you're asking who the dude is, man. Right. And so, so obscurity, and you guys want your money more than you want your no, you to be known. Yes. And our parents didn't teach us this. Yes. Our social skills. It's social skills. And, Networking but, but, techniques. But, but think about what our parents said. Hey, don't get, too much, don't get in the limelight. Yeah. Don't get known too much. Don't get too much attention. Yep. It's completely wrong. Save your money. No, no. Use money to get attention. Right. And so that's what I did. My decision last night, not only do I love baseball and I wanted to play baseball and it's been a dream to be at the World Series, but 
dude, I wanted to be on the front row, man. Yeah. You know, look, the only guy that had a better look at the game than I did yep. was, was the, the ump, the catcher, and pitcher. the batter. Yeah, it's the same with shoes. I get these shoes. One of my most popular things I post on Instagram. On average, it'll get 500,000 views. Yep. If I buy, now, I like shoes because I'm a basketball guy. I've been playing basketball. I grew up in a family that was so poor. I got one pair of shoes per year, and I played basketball Dude, eight hours these. a day. Look at these, though, dog. Look at these. Yeah, but you can't compare those these to are, these. What do you mean I can't? I'm comparing them the right sh- now. For dog. all the, the shoes. Dude, look at these. These man. are the fives. Dude, I made about, shit, probably $150 million in those shoes right there. <laughs> but it's not related to the shoes. I will, you could have been barefoot, Grant. You think? I'm pretty sure causation, call, correlation, call, the you shoes. Call, you call me Tarzan? But, I don't want to see you as Tarzan. Your wife maybe calls you Tarzan, but I'm, uh, I'm saying. Because she watches me swing from the trees. All right, changing subjects now, now, from now, conspiracy now, theory. No, no but to let me just say this grand. about the trees, okay? okay? Like real estate. Here's a little tip on real estate. Do you know what I'm going to say? Big trees. Big trees. Okay. Big money. Yep. When you, when you look for real estate, you look for big trees. Right. Big, mature trees. Absolutely. So let's talk about real estate for a second. Okay. You built a $700 million empire. You sold over a quarter of a billion. Mm-hmm. What do people need to know? Because you have a cool angle on real estate, which is basically you're trying to buy larger apartment complex. You're not going for single family or, or duplexes yeah. or things like that. What, what's your well, I angle? advise people not to do single family. Okay. Um, Why is that? Because it's one door. Yeah. You, you, got, you got Facebook. Instagram, what it was, you got YouTube, what Twitter. Got? Okay, you're dependent, yeah. you, you got four different flows going right now. Yeah. Never depend on one flow. Yes. So one front door. Yeah. Is a death, is a death trap. So okay. if there's a recession. Again, these are lies. This is the, you, you brought it up earlier. What's some things we've been taught? You talk about knowledge. Yes. You know, you were taught to buy a house. It's a dumb thing. Those houses were built not for you to have a dream. They were built for banks to lend you money. Yep. It's the only reason nobody, Warren Buffett owns one home. He's owned one home his whole life. It has, has nothing to do with his net worth. Yep. Homes are freaking 1%. If you take the last 32 years, 1% growth. Yeah. Homes only do well when inflation. people get leverage. Yeah. Okay. After you take out inflation, meaning money becomes less valuable over time in general. It's, sometimes it's, there's deflation. It's, been, it's, been, it's, been it's about 1% or 2%. It's, yeah. it's nothing. Okay. So, so, and, and, and the biggest problem with the home purchase is that you lose your mobility. Mm-hmm. You want to be able to move. People need to move, particularly today. This isn't 35 years ago where you had a job. That's why Detroit. rentals are up. Yeah, which exactly. is good for you because you're the one totally. re- you're controlling totally. so the when your real mom, estate that they're when renting. You, yeah, when your mom and your dad said, "Hey, the landlord makes all the money," what you thought it meant don't rent, own, but what it really meant was be the landlord. Be the la- exactly. When so, I got in a nightclub business, I went to a nightclub. And I paid $20 for a drink or two. And I said, wait a sec, I'm on the wrong side of this. Yeah, yeah, I went to Vegas exactly. the other day with my buddy. My buddy's made about a billion dollars online. And we were playing blackjack. And he goes, wait a sec, I'm on the wrong end of the table. I yeah, should be, exactly. I want my people dealing, exactly. not receiving the cards. Yeah, exactly. There's no money. Vegas, you don't make, you make nothing in Vegas. I don't care if people tell you, oh, I made a hundred grand. Bar. In the end, Vegas wins. And in the end, what you're basically saying is society has pushed people to be people who play Vegas and never build Vegas. The banks built those houses, okay? The banks, these guys are brilliant, okay? They're brilliant. Wall Street's brilliant. How do we keep their money? How do we capture their money? I'm going to eat 100 grand while we go. Let's sell them a house. Let's get them houses. Let's get everybody houses with no... I want 100 grand in Vegas. There you go. Um, And and, and that was for the banks. The 401k was for the banks and Wall Street, okay? Those those are the compound interest concept. That yep. doesn't exist today. You're earning 0.04% at the banks. Let's go back to this, yeah. Grant. Now you're making over 280000 a day selling various products online. Yeah. And I, I've never thought about how, what I make a day. By I don't know. We had them calculated. I like to calculate all my goals daily because I feel like it can control the day. So <coughs> take us back. You're yeah. unemployed. Yeah. You're in 20, unemployment 25, lie. 25. 25. You're out of drug rehab. Yeah. Was that around the same time? 25, yeah. It's 25. From 16 to 20, I had more money when I was eight years old than when I was 25. A lot of people can relate. I can relate to that. So what got you off the unemployment line to 287,000? I was in the unemployment line. Um, I was 23 years old. I I already had had a drug problem. I I hadn't made it out of the treatment center yet, or I hadn't gone into the treatment center. And I was 23 years old, just got out of college with an accounting degree in the unemployment line. My uncle rolls up, says, what are you doing here? 
Mm -hmm. He went in there to cash a check. Okay. Or some government check he got from somebody, some Section 8 housing he was doing. And um, I said, man, I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to I'm get, I'm get unemployment. I can't get a job. One out of four people are unemployed. Yeah, this is Louisiana. The, the, and this is 30 years ago. So this is back in the day where the unemployment numbers were reported correctly. Yes. Not like they are now. Yeah. Now so, everybody's trying to manipulate the numbers to yeah. look good. And I lived in a refinery town where it was you either did hard labor or... What'd your parents do? My dad was a, a sales guy. He died when I was 10. Okay. And then my mom, my mom never had a job. How did your mom sustain you when your dad died? He died. There was life insurance. Okay. She then protected life insurance. Yeah. So I'm getting a lesson. She was protect clipping coupons, insurance. protect the money. Yeah. She didn't know how to make money. She didn't know how to bring money in. Right. So when I was 16, I'm like, I'm not going to do this middle class thing. Because she'd keep telling me, hey, you, you should be happy. She was really poor. She yeah. grew up food line poor. Because Louisiana, some of the deep south, I live there. The south has poverty. Yeah, yeah. I lived in North Carolina. In Raleigh, you go into some of these projects, but Halifax, dude, Corp. Ca California has poverty here. You guys uh, just, everywhere, you know, everywhere. It, it's, it, it's in a Honda. Yeah. It's with an iPhone. Yep. You know, you're, you're, it's just a, it's, you're diluted. You're going to the movie theater. You're buying nice tennis shoes, you know. But, but you're really, there's really poverty. The entire middle class, I mean, if you really want to call so it. You, so you tell, is your advice to people, forget the middle class? Dude, the middle class, the last, no, you don't want to forget it. You want to run from it. Why do you want you to want run? run Because that goes like against ISIS. everything. That, like it's ISIS. Okay. Like it's ISIS, dude. It is terrorism. So why is it terrorism, though? Because, because it, it, you go to sleep in it. I'm better off than the people in Afghanistan. I'm better off. The comparison, the middle class is built on a comparison. Yeah. I'm not in poverty. Mm -hmm. I have food. This is what my mom told me all the time. You have a bicycle. We have a car. We have a roof over our head. We have heat. We have running water. Be grateful. You have clothes on your back. And that is where the, that, that's where the trap gets yeah. set. I'm better off than others. This gratitude thing. But is there a tendency or a possibility that you become ungrateful? Because on the rise... Like, yeah, of course. no rise is overnight. No, get rich quick is, is a scam. So I say get rich and get, getting rich quicker is a possibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is there, if you take that mentality full board, do you ever feel like people might go, well, I'm only making, I've got one of Grant's programs I'm learning to sell. I'm only making, you know, 150000 Last year I was making zero. Shouldn't there be yeah. an element of gratitude? And how do you balance yeah, that? Yeah, but I, I didn't say there shouldn't be a gratitude. You, sure, you should be grateful, but you shouldn't be satisfied. So the difference is, I like that. You I know? posted it. One of my most popular yeah. Instagrams was, it's okay, it's okay to be grateful, but yeah. never be satisfied. Yeah, you, you should always be grateful, even when you're losing, dude. Like, like I'm at Mandalay Bay, and I'm captured in this place. Okay, I'm not dead. I have a Glock 26. I have four round, uh, four, uh, uh, four clips. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm the only person in here who can protect myself. My wife knows what to do, okay? Yep. So I'm alive right now, but you need to be ready and you need to stay ready. So you, every situation has something to be grateful for, but you don't want to use the gratitude thing as a way to accept yes. that you're, you're operating below your potential. Yeah. And that's what I did. You wrote a book. Yeah. Let's talk yeah. about your book. Yeah. I've recommended people read it. You've written yeah. a, a couple books, but one of your most well-known, I would say, is this yeah. Yeah. 10X. So is your basic philosophy in this book Take whatever you grew up thinking you would make, Basic thinking what life, multi excuse me, what, multiply what, by 10, whatever the and that's what you do. Whatever the target is. Yep. You, if, if, you, if you think, okay, man, I want to make 80 grand a year, okay, then, then, then what all the books suggest is like you need to think 10 times bigger than that because basically what you did was you adopted somebody else's idea. Your ideas. Right. Small. Are, are it's not a big tree. Well, they're constructed by, they're constructed by our, our, the influence around us. Yes. So when people say, hey, I'm going to write my goals down, that's good. Or I'm going to go do the, the think and grow rich thing, or I'm going to do the, yeah, but what what, the secret, right? But some people, conceptualization, they can't even dream correctly. But, but that, exactly, yeah. that's the problem. Like, yes. I, like, I just want a good job. I want a good family. I want a, I want a house. The, the thinking, you, your goal setting has been influenced by your yes. environment. So if you just think a little bigger, look, all you got to do is go back to 2007 and understand somebody set the wrong goals. Yep. Okay, half of America got wiped out. Yes. We forgot about that now. Yeah, but half of America. It's, it's going to come again. Oh, yeah, it's gonna sooner come than later. There'll the, be a recession. Totally agree. Every no, the, ten years or so. The next one will be so deep, so yeah. brutal, and so long. Okay. Yeah. You think it's going to be bigger than 2007? Is that your prediction? No doubt about it. What What makes you think that? What we, are the we indicators? We have almost we have almost uh, 40 percent more debt. Yeah. There's no way it's more not debt be. and income hasn't gone up that much. Productivity is not look, up. Look, the Dodger Stadium had more tickets for sale. Yes. Than 
16,000 out of the 56,000 tickets were for sale. Why hmm. is that? Yeah, people, need, people can't get that people money. People are broke. Yeah. You know? That's the one thing I've learned from social media is you can't fathom, and especially you and I, we grew up, I didn't, neither of us grew up with, you know, handed business or handed a billion dollars or anything like that. It's easy to forget, like most people are struggling to, by now. And I, I try to, to never forget that. So one, of, had every, uh, one out of every five days this year, the stock market hit a record. Yeah. Almost 20%. And what goes up must come down. One, every, one out of every five days has hit, this, this is crazy, dude. Yeah. Maybe one out of six days, a record. But so that, what's the practical? That money's all going to, this, to, to a handful of people. So what's the practical tip? Somebody listening, yeah. they're struggling yeah. financially, they hear your story, they see my stuff. What's something somebody can do within the next 24 hours yeah. that allows them to Just think sell bigger? Something. Go sell something. Sales. Sell anything. Go sell sales. your tennis shoes. I sell totally something. agree with that. Immediately, what you need commission to, sales, well, no, non-salary no, no, based 100% sales. One hundred percent commission to you. Yes. Go sell something at your house you're not using. Yep. Anything. Now, why why do I tell you that? Because, like, you want to go raise money right now. Like, who's got my money? This is my mantra when I wake up in the morning. Right. I, you know, who's got my money? Who's got? Yeah, you what, say that a lot on who's social got media. My money. Right. So you need to go out. And I need a target. It. Who's got it? Like, like, quit saying that you don't have it. You can't get it. Who's got what should be yours? Yeah. Rather than saying money won't make you happy. I don't care if it makes me happy or not. Dude, when you're broke, you need money. Yeah. Money's so when oxygen. I, when you exactly. don't when you have it, you forget that you have it. The second someone puts your head what, underwater, yeah. you remember how what, important what I do, oxygen is. As soon is. as I get it, I get rid of it. Yeah. So you get rid of it. Your big so believer is not hoard it and reinvest it. I get I get it. I don't spend it. I, I'm I'm very frugal. Yeah. So I get it, I stash it. As soon as there's a little mountain, I push it. And what do you push it? You like push real estate, everything into real estate. business. I push everything, everything into real estate. E everything into my main business, in, first into myself. Yes. But you can only spend so much on yourself. Yeah. In self-development, right? Yep. Sooner or later, that should start working. If whatever you're doing is not working, you're doing the wrong thing. Yes. Second thing you're going to push to is I'm going to push to my business, yep. whatever that business is that's giving me that first flow. Yes. No matter how small that first flow is, you need to, you need to keep feeding that thing. Yes. Right? So that it blossoms. Absolutely. And then when there's enough left over and you got a big freaking blossom, then you push that off to the side. Yeah. And what I want to go into at that point is something that's indestructible. Real estate. Knowing that, that your business is, is destructible. There's not a business out there right now that's not destructible. Yeah. These phones, the Facebooks, the Googles, the YouTubes, they will not exist for sure in your lifetime. Somewhere in the next 20 to 30 years, there won't be a Facebook, there won't be an iPhone. Maybe None faster, these... maybe faster. Exactly. Companies no. come and go, MySpace comes and goes. I mean, you'd the, be surprised. You go Yahoo, Yahoo the GoPro. was going to be worth, how many billion they turned it uh, down the and then they hardly sold for two. The yeah, Blackberry's Black done. The taxi cab drivers, like the cowboys, the horses. It's like the Bible says. The Dodgers. The Dodgers, yeah, they may be back. They may be, don't piss off this town. I want you to, you and you and your pilot to get off the ground. We don't want a riot to meet you at the private airport. But remember, all flesh is grass. That's one of the oldest proverbs. And what that means is everything comes in a cycle. The grass exactly. grows, it looks exactly. great, and then it's gone. Exactly. And that, if, but if so you, you diversify if you, with real estate. No, no, I don't, diver uh, I mean. You no, push I, all in on dude, real I'm estate. A, I'm all in. I mean, I like what Mark Cuban says, diversification's for idiots. Yeah. But another thing that we were taught in the middle class, Diversify your assets. Be in a hundred investments. Yeah. Right. Why? That's mutual funds. That was for that was for Wall Street. That pitch was for Wall Street, saying you're too stupid. I want to go all in on one thing, so I'm going to miss a whole bunch of stuff that you might invest in. Yep. Because I want hard assets that yep. produce cash every month. I don't build anything. Yep. All I do is buy trophy income producing location a properties yep and if you go back to maslow's hierarchy of needs what's at the bottom physical so the good thing about real estate what grant's saying is no matter what people will be two thousand years ago they were building shelters and they'll be doing it two thousand years from now people must have it now the yeah. prices yeah. will fluctuate there are bad real estate deals you to can totally, one of my totally, business partners totally. was a billionaire in real estate he told me back in the 80s he was he built a apartment complex, condo complex, and the thing went, he literally bulldozed it. Yeah. So you can, you still have to be smart in oh, real totally. estate. But, what, but what's something people need to know? Time, here's, you have to have cash flow. Yep. That's why the first, the single door doesn't work. That, but cash flow is great to have a business. He's generating 287,000 a day with the online and in-person sales, belly to belly business. Yeah, and phones. And you can push that over also 
into a hard asset. So I tell yeah, people, yeah. it's not that diversification. I mean, I, I know Mark. Mark Cuban, what he's saying is, he's not saying you should never diversify. But wealth isn't created by diversity. It, Safety is created, but wealth is created by focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what, you want big bets, though. Look, the reason yes. the reason Las Vegas, Las Vegas exists is not because the odds are against the player. It's because the players never play big enough yes. to bust the bank. Yeah. Okay, if a bunch of whales went over there. They won't let so, you. They'll kick they you out. They won't let you, They'll man. Kick they you won't out. even let you. Why do they have the <laughs> limits on the game? Because they don't want to get broken. Yes. Because people don't bet big enough. Like, that's what my family didn't teach me, man. They didn't. My family taught me to play a little game, and they loved me, and they were awesome. My mom, my mom's job was to protect me. Yeah. Right. But so, so nobody said, "Dude, go in." So to, the the problem with most people can't go all in because you guys don't do your homework on one thing. You study fifty things. Yep. Rather than becoming an expert in one thing. Yeah. So. So you, your core expertise, you would say, has been. I mean, I know sales and persuasion. I, I, I know sales and real estate. And I and I know real estate. I know real estate yeah. better than I know sales. Yeah. I, I have a tuning fork in me. And people don't realize that. That's why one of the things I want to bring out, that this guy knows a ton about real estate. It's kind of like me. People, in the modern world, people compartmentalize people. So people sometimes meet me and they're like, oh, you're yeah. the Lamborghini guy. Yeah, yeah. As yeah, if yeah. I only know about Lamborghinis. Yeah. And then they meet me. I had, I had some people, uh, some billionaire on a, on a podcast uh, not too long ago. And at the end, they were like, wow. You actually know about business, but remember that's going to happen to each of you. Yeah, you will be pigeonholed, and that's it's actually okay. Yeah, they sleep they're, on they're, you, look, and they don't look, realize look, you're building a seven hundred million dollar real my, estate portfolio. My, my first job was a car salesman. That my first real job that I at, that I finally made it. It was my sixth job, but my first commitment. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm going to get great at this job. I hated it, by the way. Yep, hated it. And I said, I'm going to get great at a job I hate. Yep. And and then I'm going to quit. Yep. Okay, once I, but, but I fell in love with it, dude. I was like, man, I'm good at this. Man, yeah. I don't need to lie to anybody. I don't need to cheat anybody. I don't need to manipulate. And basically what I discovered was another way to sell things. Yeah. The way that people want it. Right. Give them a price. Tell them how much it's going to be. Yes. Tell them if you can't win their business, no problem, right? So, what, so what's the, what is the core grant? Because you have your own philosophy. It's yeah. not manipulative. So yours is be direct, do, do, be to the do, point, and be, keep it a short sell cycle. Don't try to read tones and personalities or match. Don't try to do any of that hooky shit because... Dude, dude, You're talking about I, mirroring. He's talking about a principle uh, yeah, called mirroring. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I don't believe in it because, look, you, 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 the only reason you'd want to mirror is because you don't want to have a full pipeline. The way the right. way to win in business is to have a full pipeline. Amazon yep. wins. Top of the funnel. Got, exactly, top of the funnel exactly. wide. So you, I agree with you on yeah. not mirroring. I do like reading personalities. So it's okay. We have a slightly it, it, different philosophy. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. for sure, the, the it, cheesy mirroring, if you lean forward, I lean yeah, forward, yeah, you or, start or, looking or, or like you a guys, whack you guys, job. You guys that think that I have folded arms, I guarantee you there's some comments in here. Oh, yeah. I started this with my arms folded. They're like, oh, he's closed off. To, that's all bullshit, dude. That's yeah. some psychologist, okay? Yeah, that's You guys true. getting your information from psychologists. That's more style. Some people sit like this. It's dumb. Hey, yeah, by yeah. the way, snap a little bit, uh, either Sam or Zach. What do you want, Ryan? I was doing a video. Okay. We're good. We got 4,000 live concurrent on Facebook. So, so let's got, back, back, back to the, uh, back to what I do, right? So I basically took the automobile industry. I saw a problem. I'm like, nobody wants to spend four hours in a car dealership. Yep. So I was 29 years old and I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to turn this sales thing upside down in the car industry. Only thing I knew was cars. Yep. Well, I turned the car industry over. Like every car dealer in the country knows me. If you're, if you're looking for a good deal on a car, right, right at the end of the negotiations, say, I know Grant Cardone, and I guarantee you'll get a better deal. Okay? Really? So, I'm going to try Grant. I hope I you're guarantee. throwing out real theories. No, no. Because I'm no, going no. to do that. No, no. Number two, number two. Can I wear a mask of yours and just pretend I'm you walking yeah, just into lease, the dealership? Just lease. Just lease. Number two, um, <laughs> what I realized was every industry had that problem. Right. Furniture. People Insurance. suck at sales. It's too long. Even man. restaurants long. The suck. The whole thing. The whole. Think about how primitive the concept was. Yes. Okay. This sales was created years ago when you went door to door, and but you had to travel across farmland and like right. you. So you sat down. And so you're saying it needs to be updated. You've updated totally, the system. Totally. You got 3.0 sales. Transparent. Yeah. Okay. Fast. Tell them how long it's going to be. Tell them what you're going to do. How do you do. you believe in overcoming objections? This is a oh, common. Yeah, absolutely. So common thing. How would you? I, over, I, I what's your favorite way to overcome an objection? First People. of all, treat the objection like it's a it's a complaint, not an objection. Okay. So as it, let's the say the price is too high. I agree with you completely. And by the way, I knew that before you did. Yeah. Okay. 
So you say that to them. Yeah, I knew, I knew that. Like, I'm selling this watch. The watch is 70 grand. Man, I, you know he's going to say too much. Yeah. So let's say Sam and says that's too, too much. much man. It, of course it's too much, dude. There's 25 of them in the world. Right. Okay, Visa, MasterCard, American Express. Nobody buys this watch because it's not too much. They buy it because it is too much. Right. You know? So you flip it around. Yeah, you, Somebody I use said the reverse energy. psychology. You, no, 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 it's not. You guys getting all He's energy. calling you out. It's not I'm reverse calling, psychology. Yeah. No, no, it's using the energy. Yes. It's more kung fuish. Yes. Right? Or you know more about that. Jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu. Yeah, there you go. Kung fu is still strikes. Jiu-jitsu. Yeah. So, so, so basically it is, look, it's integrity selling. Agree with them. Do you not, do, have you not thought that was a lot of money for a watch? It's a reframing, car? we can exactly. say. Exactly. It's like, just agree with them. It's just like, be honest. Yep. How about be honest? Yeah. Okay. Those shoes, man, they're two grand, dude. That's a lot of money, right? Yep. You're right. He knew that. Might be why he wants them. What about the objection? Very common. I'm very interested. Let me think about it. For great, those of you doing great, sales, it's going to be the most great, common, uh, one of the great. most common objections. We should objections. do a course for these people, like basic yeah. stuff. Of course, we're, gonna, we're working on a course, of course for you, you guys. Of course, you want to think about it. Of course, you want to think about it. Yeah. How long have you been thinking about it? Because if you're the kind of person that thinks about it, you thought about coming here. You thought about calling me. You right. Thought, you've been here, probably visited my website three or four or five times. Yes. By the way, these skills that we teach people are definitely website and internet transferable. And this is the stuff they should have taught us in school. By the way, the fact that sales isn't a required part of school, everything you do in life will have some component of sales. Whether it be getting married, whether it be getting a business part, you have to persuade people. People have their own worldview, and you have to be able to interject with your worldview. Yeah. Or else you're always taking advantage of. You guys that want to hide behind a computer, you need need to learn a sales game. So, sales, what is... There is no difference between selling on Facebook or Shopify. No, it's all the same. Or door to door or over the phone. But you there's a few off. there's you, a few advanced strategies when it comes to online, but the same psychology exists. Psychology don't, don't, exists. Totally. Same concept. Same, same psychology. Same tracks you're running down. You basically have the procrastinators. Totally. You have the people who are but hot, why, ready why, to buy. Why do people procrastinate? See, that's the Multiple thing to ask reasons. yourself. Because of fear. uncertainty. Yeah, fear uncertainty. and uncertainty. So the thing you want to do with, with, a, with a customer is you want to raise their certainty, not reduce it. Yes. You definitely don't want to challenge it. You yep. want to raise it because when I raise somebody's certainty, then I make a decision. Yep. So uh, what is that? Certain people. Do you think that's just giving them more information? Because yeah, that's what people yeah, go. Yeah, in room, in room to breathe, right? Room to breathe and room to move around, right? And, and maybe it mean, means you need a follow-up. Like we have a program that's just follow-up. You're not going to close everybody no matter what you do. What percentage of deals do you think can be closed realistically first time around if they're $500 plus? In your mind, if you were the, on your, at your call center. Tiny. Very tiny. And on average, how I wouldn't many even, I wouldn't three? Even, I wouldn't would you try to call them three I times? I wouldn't measure it. Call, calls? How many oh. would you want for one person to close a $500 deal? What do you think? Three? Five? More like 12. 12 calls. So do you do little calls? Just, hey, what's up? I thought hey, I'd catch up, up with you. Text, email, yep. gift. So it doesn't have to be all phone calls. It can be text. It can Elena, be email. you met Elena. I called, yep. her, I called her 26 times over 13 months. Yep. I didn't expect her to close the first time. That's how you got married. Yeah. She didn't put you on block? I have a client, she didn't block I, you? I have a guy that I've been calling for 17 years, dude. I still haven't cl- closed it. 17 years? Still haven't closed it, dude. But what kind do, of deal when is I do, I'm a wacky. It's not I'm marriage, a, right? I'm a wacky. I'm not going to marry him. Okay. All right, cause you you, you that went from Atlanta here. to 17. <laughs> I don't know, Florida. Florida. We're not alone in California. Uh, so, <laughs> changing subject once more. Um, for somebody D, watching. NED. Hashtag NED. For somebody watching. What do they need to know if they don't know anything about sales? What would you tell them to start? Go start sell cars? No, I, I would sell something in your house. I wouldn't go get a job. Online? eBay? I'd find something at your house you hadn't touched in a long time. Maybe even more importantly, take something you love and sell it. So what's an example? Quit, quit. The your shoes. tennis shoes. Yeah. Some, some, some uh, you know, something you got from some park, uh, a jersey, something you spent too much money on that was stupid. You need to know that you can raise money. Yeah. If you don't want to sell any of your shit, then go to the street corner. Go, go get on a street corner and go, go stop cars and say, give me 20. Right. Or just raise it to 100. You think cold See, that's car- why Mormons are so successful, dude. Because they take their kids and the they make them mission. cold car the salesmen. Missions. The two-year missions. That's great. I, that's an example. The Mormon, you don't have to be Mormon to learn the principle. No, is that no, sticking go, people there yeah. and saying, confront, go get Confront. over your fear. Because people are afraid. People are afraid. Confront. 
I tell people, you should only be afraid of one thing, and that's living a crappy life. Yeah, I agree with that. Besides, being turned so, so down like, is like, part of the game. Yeah, yeah, it, and like my real estate background, I'm not transitioning here, but, but I've never read a book on real estate. Yeah. And I'm not bragging about that. He's but, written some books. But not on real estate. But, but that's coming next. You yeah, watch. Is, You're gonna is. have a real. I know but, you, Grant. But I have, a book coming. I have walked so much real estate. Just don't have an okay. NED book. I'm not promoting the NED book. I'm out. Um, rents go up when you solve the NED issue. Um, <laughs> I'll have a, a so, so, RFP. But, but, but you see, people. A lot of people read books. I think I, I, I think you'll disagree with me a little bit on this. But, it's good to disagree. People but, like that. Drama but, sells. But I think people read. The, the people that do read read too many books. Depends on how fast you read. Okay, but but you can get too much information. Yeah, okay. that's hard. Huh? If you follow my 50-50 rule, you'll be good. 50% a wise general plans but doesn't over plan. I guarantee And a wise general attacks I guarantee, but I, doesn't over attack. I guarantee there's at least eight to 10 people that you've read yeah. that were miserable motherfuckers. That I've read Some about? Of, you've read their books. Oh yeah, that, that that had failing marriages. Sure, could have committed suicide. Freaking junkies. I'm like, dude, who do you want to learn from? You guys got to start picking who you're gonna. Yeah, learn but I from. don't just read. I read from. I try business. See, I read from the me best. And, me and you have different styles. Yeah, like you know, really different, right? But th I think we agree on more points than we don't. Of course. So people need to pick one or two people. Yes. I'd go deep on a guy before I'd go shallow on a bunch of people. Right. Yeah, I mean that. that I go deep on Warren Buffett. Yeah. I think he's the best businessman to walk in our planet by far. I read his, you know, he puts See, out an he annual said newsletter. Here, deep on Warren. Oh, hell yeah. My business partner. Don't blame you, dude. You got Warren Buffett's basically God to And by the way, business. why does Warren diversify? Not because he wanted to. Because no, he had he, to. He has so much cash. So much money. He's got 100 billion. And bill. by the way, when he goes, yeah. okay, he goes all in. He does two deals on average a year since 1965. Yeah. He's done about 75 deals, a little bit more. Let's say 100 main deals. Yeah. He has yeah. 75 holding company making 200 bill a year. So there's good you sure money. You look good tonight, man. Me? You look good, man. I thought you were talking to the, to the camera. No, you. You look good. Give him a little. Give, give, you know, I got to try to keep up with you one way or another. You look good, man. Just with a suit. So somebody say he has 400 million. Yeah, what, what Buffett does. Here's Buffett's philosophy. Buffett basically says, we'll get this on Snap. Flash it, always. One of the things that Buffett says is, if you want to get rich, put all your eggs in one basket, but what, watch, watch the basket. basket. Watch and basket. he doesn't mean you shouldn't diversify. What he's saying is what you're saying. You yeah, must yeah. focus. Yeah, yeah, and I say yeah. you could build multiple streams of income, but you got to build them one at a time. Yeah, yeah, I agree. With it's that. like a building totally a house. And, 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 you got to build the first floor before the second. And, you can't but, do half first and half second. don't get rid of the first floor. No. Don't, don't get no, the first sure. floor, build the second floor, and say, okay, now I'm going to bulldoze the first floor. That's what a lot of you guys do. you right. got one stream coming, you add a second one, and you freaking neglect the first one, and you end up with half. Exactly. So rather than two. So what I did was I took my first job. I never left that first job. Still today, I'm still doing that first yep. job. I never leave that first job. Then what I do is I add a symbiotic yeah, it's flow cumulative. to it. I try to symbiotic the first one. So whatever I'm yep. doing here, it moves this one. That's like Confucius third. said, the man who chases two rabbits catches none. But you can catch one rabbit and then move on to the next what rabbit. What we say in Louisiana is you catch a fucking rabbit, you barbecue him. <laughs> you eat him. Just, uh, you I eat think that just rabbit. post it like that. Okay. You eat that rabbit. That is a little more southern version eat of the Confucius's. Dog. Why you chase a rabbit if you're not going to eat him? That's just dumb. You're a magician. What if you're selling the fur? Huh? Could, well, then you or what if you want a bunny rabbit, rabbit for your daughter? I like that idea. For eat the rabbit, money, sell for the Easter. fur. Any date. Hashtag any date. Hashtag. That is not a, do not do that on grants. <laughs> That's good. Okay. So next question. I want to take a question that I saw come up here live. Okay. So somebody said, how do you invest if you don't have any money? Go get money. Okay. So how do you go get money? Who's got your money, dude? So you you went out. You said you told me you I didn't started. Have any money. You you were able to borrow some three, money. I three thousand. Just so everybody knows, because some people compare me to Donald Trump, right? I borrowed I borrowed three grand from my mom, and I paid her back thirty days later. So how did? What I is the, the message though? You had to say. What do you have to say to her to get her? I went to my to mom give you and three I said, grand. Mom, mom, I need to learn car sales. I found this program. I want to learn. She's like, you don't even like car sales. I know. I don't like it. I need to learn it. I need to learn how to do this, and then yeah. I'm going to quit it. 
I have to get. And good you bought at a tape. So you bought like I old bought VHS. Oh, be beta. What was it the was name of the guy? That. Jackie Cooper. Jackie Cooper. Isn't that a baseball player? No, 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 no. That's uh, he Jackie was teaching Robinson. sale. Oh, Jackie. So, so who's Jackie Cooper? But a lot of baseball players have sold cars. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, so so and a lot of athletes lose all their money and then go back to selling cars after they play. And some people here are going to be like, "Oh, he's a car salesman. He sounds like a car salesman." You guys, you guys need to quit hating on shit you don't understand. I'm telling you, you need to quit hating. So many people out there. I don't want to do that job. I don't want to make somebody else rich. You guys got the wrong ideas. If you're going to get rich, it's because you're going to help somebody else get rich. Yeah. Okay. You Joel Salatz had told me, a man can or woman can do anything as long as it's not forever. So don't be too picky when you're completely broke. You can do anything as long as you're not locking yourself into a 30-year bad run in some yeah, nasty yeah, business. Yeah. But, but be, if you willing, got, be yeah. willing to do anything, even when you get to the top of the food chain, the, the, guy, the guys that I know that are, are really successful and happy, they'll pick up a broom. Yeah. They'll but clean you don't the toilet. Wanna, when you're at the top, you're, in, you're not sweeping every day. Yeah. You step in like Google, some of the CEOs of the largest company in the world, they'll go do customer support. Twice, uh, you touch, know, two days a touch, month, right? Yeah, you got to always keep connected, but you should delegate out as you build. So how do you build your business? So, so you can't I'm, do everything. I'm how do you saying, delegate? Well, I mean, you know, I just do as much as I can. Because you have a then, big team. Yeah. Do you, so, do you have what? How many people in there in Florida? I came to your office. We, we have 70 people there, another 150 in the real estate. Do you use a see? traditional hierarchy? Another, you got a nah, CEO, not really, not really, you got no, bosses. No, not, not really. I need more of that. Yeah. I was with the guy, the founder of ABC Mouse today, 600 employees. Yeah. Place is so organized, man. It's just like. So that's not your forte? No, I'm not a good organizer, but I need to learn that game. Yeah. So there's always something to learn, right? But, yeah. but. What are you reading these days? You don't read much, you say. Is it, well. What do you read? What's a book that's dude, changed your life been, besides your book? All, I, uh, all I've been reading right now is real estate, uh, is You've been uh, reading the deals. Performance and deals. Yeah. I mean, I've been reading so many deals right now. Like, What's got you excited? Uh, you know, the real estate. I think it's a huge play. I think that we're in the, the next cycle for apartments is going to last 35 years. Are you worried about a depression? No, not at all. Because you'll be buying cheap. No, I'll be. A, a, a contraction would help me. That's right. what I'm saying. It, it would help. If it was a but, contraction, but, a recession, no, but, and you're on the right end what, of the deal, happens, you'll do what, better. What happens with my real estate is my real estate can go down in value, but I'm not selling it. Right. That value is As long as the cash flow is there. The cash flow doesn't change. As long as change. they pay rent. Like in 2008 yeah. and 2009, I kept getting rent, man. It's, the rent never stopped. Yeah. So, so that's, as long as you have cash flow, this is what people don't understand. As long as you have cash flow, you don't lose. Yes. Because if I have time, apartments double every 10 years. Mm -hmm. Every 10 years, I get them double. I'm going to get it no matter from the top, from the bottom, I'm going to get a double. Okay. Most of the stuff that I buy, we, we look for a 300% return over eight to 10 years. And that's counting accumulated cash flow, cash retained flow. cash. And we yeah. just wait for that part of the cycle to where I'm, I want to sell now. Yeah. So, so you want to sell? It's an indestructible because you're, we're going to become Europe here where it's unaffordable. Yeah. You, it's unaffordable to buy a house. You here. think so? You think America's headed in the direction oh, of no Europe? Doubt. We have the lowest home ownership in America that we've had since Grant's in saying 40 that years. He thinks America's going to become like Europe. No doubt. Because we're there now. People used to only spend about 25% of their income on housing. Now yeah. it's going up, up. In Europe, people spend 50, 60%. Dude, dude, we have the highest lease rates in the history of the automo automobile industry. Yeah. Why is that? Because people can own. Yeah. They don't have the down payment. They don't have the monthly payment. And it's becoming, it's becoming cool to use rather than own. Yeah. Right? So I, I lease my roles. Yeah, it's better to lease cars. Okay. And it so, depends on if you have a business or not. If you, in America, if you don't have a business, if you're an employee, you can't usually deduct a lease. Yeah. So you have, that's I, why I said. I rent my home. But all the way, all you homeowners yeah. out there, you're getting all your, your tax deductions are about to change right now. Yeah. So like I. You think for the better or for the worse? For the worse. Yeah. For home ownership. And it should. It's, it, it, it's, it's a dumb investment for you. So you'll get a lot. We'll get a lot of. The home ownership thing is like, people are so like, no, that's my thing. It's right. a dumb thing. A lot you're, of antiquated ideas. Dead. Yeah, like, so, so, like, I own Put is a America company. Put the new Europe. I own a company that I can rent from. Mm -hmm. So I could own this structure. Yep. In a structure. And then rent from rent myself. Rent back to get I'm the tax deduction. Exactly. Yeah. So I get 100% of all the great. Yep. There's a lot of tricks for those of you as you get bigger in the game of business. Yeah. There's a tremendous amount of tools out there when you become sophisticated, like you said, so buying, leasing back to, that, back back to, to yourself, back to things like that. The question the guy asked about how do you buy apartments if you don't have any money? Dude, you don't. 
You don't buy anything without money. Yes. Okay. So Any, that's why you need to, they need something. Sell some, sales, learn how to sell something. Start a business, sell online, sell something in your home. Okay. Be, yeah. Because most of you don't have any goals. The reason you don't want to sell is because you don't have an end goal. It's what he said. You can do anything for a little while. Yes. So I did the sales game so that I could, I didn't want to be a car salesman. Yep. I did it so I could get my money. Yep. Right. It planted a seed that you were, have now grown now, into a large tree. Now, now I knew, oh, I can control, I can talk to people. I can, I, I, I learned a skill set, right? So I'm really thankful to, to the auto industry for that. But then I took that, saw an opportunity, sold, sold a solution to yep. that industry, got money, took that money and put it in the real estate. Yep. I, I only, only want to know how to sell because it's survival. How'd you learn real estate? What got you? Just trial and error? Three years, I walked apartments every weekend. For three years. And how'd you never, learn? Didn't buy one deal. Didn't buy one deal. Okay. So you laid years. the foundation. You that laid means the foundation. I, that means by the time I was 33 years old, I had looked at probably, I don't know, thousands of units. That's, what, by the way, what Arnold Schwarzenegger did. Arnold Schwarzenegger walked the streets of Santa Monica, and he became a millionaire before he was 30, not from acting, not from bodybuilding, but from real estate. He That's also, right. the other cool thing about Arnold Schwarzenegger, before the internet. All apartments, by the way. He, he wasn't buying homes. He yeah. was buying apartments. And he shipped weights in the mail. Before the internet, you know, uh -huh. you couldn't sell. And so he had a cash flow business that required sales. And then he learned real estate was a reinvestment back into real estate. Yeah. So he, did you learn then after three years, you just jumped into what a deal? What happened was I, was I lived in Houston at the time and I walked real estate every weekend. I'd look at deals, I'd look at, didn't buy anything. I was scared. Yeah. So I moved from Houston to La Jolla. Yep. And I said, if I ever get that feeling again, because if you look enough, you don't, you don't get that from books. When you walk properties yes. or look at businesses, you start to get a feeling wrong, 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 right. wrong, wrong. You develop your intuition. You, you develop you your gut feeling. A tuning fork. Yeah. Really. Your it's, spidey it's not, sense, it, it, so to speak. Like, oh, God. Oh, this feels good. So I went to, to San Diego and I said, if I ever feel that again, I'm going to buy it. It was 1995. I was driving downtown San Diego um, and I'm, I'm with a buddy of mine, Dale, and I'm like, dude, I got this feeling, dude. Something was happening. There was more. There was more trucks leaving. More. Uh, what's the truck that uh, U-Haul stuff? U-Hauls were yeah. leaving California. And they're coming in, and I said, "Dude, I got the feeling. I'm about 500 units." Huh? In what year? 1996. In San Diego. Yeah. Where'd you buy 500? Uh, Chula Vista, um, uh, all the way up to Vista, California. So Just by then, had you all, saved all money from car sales that oh, allow yeah, you to put I, a down payment? I, I think I had at that time. I had. Uh, my first deal was my first deal. I put 350 grand in my first deal. I had a million dollars. Yeah, from the sales thing. Yep. I'm accumulating money for years. I just accumulated, accumulated. Didn't buy the sneakers. Yeah. Didn't have a German car. Yeah. I had millions of dollars in the bank. I did not. You would not have thought my life had changed one bit. Yeah. I was printing on double-sided paper. Like if I printed, I'd print it on both sides because I thought it saved me money. Yeah. So you took the so you took a down payment. How did you talk the banks my, to giving you your first deal? The, the problem, well, I was qualified. I had good credit, and and I had three hundred fifty grand to put down. The deal was one point nine million. I put twenty five percent down. Fifty units for two million. It was thirty eight units. Thirty eight units. Oof. Okay. And Times have changed in yeah, San Diego, yeah, boy. Now you're like, oh, I should have bought all that. Yeah, everybody should have bought all. The bank didn't want to give me a loan. Yeah, I was right? too young. Prior first to, first okay. two banks told me no. Yeah. Third bank said, let's do the deal. I bought thirty eight units. Second deal was bought 30 days later, 48 units. Third deal was bought about three months later, 90 units. I'm like, dude, I'm going. And yeah. I was collecting money every month. Yeah. So I'm like. Was it positive cash flow right on day one? Day one. Yeah. Everything we buy is positive for day one. Even now? Even now. So your source, you're having to look at a lot of deals because a lot of deals you get yeah, out there, I, I are, they're look, banking on appreciation, so they're not look, cash flow I positive used to on look, day I used, one. I used to look at 25 deals to buy one. Now we're looking at hundreds. Yeah. To buy one. So what's your process now? Do you have people help you or do you literally sit at your desk and just flip through them yourselves? Dude, I walk every deal. Yeah. So you I look am, at it. I am the picker. Yeah. Okay. I'm the picker. Yeah. So I got a, a big team that helps me go over numbers. So they filter it down. Send then you deals. get on the plane and go look. Yeah. Yeah. So how many deals do you find per year that qualify, that filter, what, what, get what, through what, your what, filter? We have, we have three deals in contract right now. So I, I looked at to get those three deals, I looked at 10,000 units. Yeah. To get, to get a, that, that'll be about 1,000 units. Yep. What's the goal? You said 4,000 units? No, we're at 4,000 now. We'll be at 5,000 by the end of the year. We'll be at uh, 10,000 probably in the next three years. Yeah. Maybe faster. Yeah. And is that the goal? 10,000? 40,000. 40,000. 40,000, I want to bring the whole package to Wall Street.
you can do a, what's called a REIT roll up. Yeah. That's great. If you own enough real estate, there's huge tax advantages. This is one of the things that not everybody gets asked, asked us to because a REIT roll up, you got to have a billion or two billion in real estate, but then you get yeah, basically, yeah. you basically walk out, you exchange your real estate well, for REIT revenue, share. Right? Yeah. They're buying, they're buying. But you don't pay that much taxes. The name of the yeah. game too, and one of the good things about real estate and yeah. business, by the way, is that you got to control taxes. And if you're only a W-2 employee, the tax code does not favor you like it does yeah, somebody but, who has real estate but, you know, and somebody who has a... I mean, one of the reasons I lived here for 25 years here in California, I lived up the street. You ran from California with it. As soon, soon as they did their jack-jack. <laughs> yeah. As soon as they did their, hey. Woo-hoo. And he's in Florida, no state tax. So There's a couple the way, places with that, no state tax. That wasn't tax. for me. Like we, uh, you, you don't know it until you do it, but all you do is you reinvest all the money. Yep. It's not like you keep the money when you save state taxes. Right. So you're a believer, lower taxes. Totally. Yeah. Because that's what people, one of the things I realized, it, America's so financially illiterate. People don't realize the way money works. It's not like Bill Gates, richest man in the world, takes all his money and sits on it like the hobbit dragon sitting on a big chest of gold. No, they redeploy it back into the world. So trickle down economics is somewhat controversial, but the basic concept is, Look what happened to California. They raised taxes. You left. I left, man. And if they raise taxes too much in Florida, my buddies are all so, leaving, so going to you, Virgin you, Islands. They're going where, to Caymans. Where, they're going. They where, leave where, America. Apples know, in Ireland. Where Where do you think I'm buying real estate? Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't buy anything in this state. Let me post this real quick and read. Yeah, it. I wouldn't buy anything here. So this, is a bro- this is a broken state, man. You don't just raise taxes here, okay? They're, they're, that, that three and a half percent they raised taxes in California did not solve their problem. Parking yeah. tickets went up the next day, okay, right? Parking tickets, like everything went up, man. Uh, they, they, uh, StubHub made, I can, buy, I can buy tickets on StubHub in Houston, Yep. and I can buy them in California, it's like double here. Yeah, because of the taxes. On the fees, because yeah. of the taxes. So why? Because the state is broken, okay? You, you park a car over on Rodeo Drive, and if you had 20 minutes on that thing and they chalk you, yeah. Dude, at 21 minutes, you got a ticket. Yeah. The state's broken. Yeah. So what do you, how would you, if you were the governor, if you were the president, no, I would how move. do you fix I California? I would tell everybody that you would move. move dude. I am now the, the governor move. of California. Stupid, everybody leave. Move. This is my solution. No, you guys should move. What the governor should have done is he should have taken taxes down to like 6%. Yeah. But I'm saying, would you and just drop taxes? He, he needs to admit he's broken. Yeah. He, he's paying firemen and policemen $130,000 a year because they made a commitment to pay them years ago, and now they found out they can't. Sooner or later, you've got to renegotiate a deal. Yeah. There comes a deal, there comes a time in a relationship where you've got to go back to your partner and say, dude, this doesn't work anymore. Right. Can't Me and you it. do a deal. Let's say yeah. we do a deal. Yep. We go down the road, everything's fine for two or three years, and then something changes. Ty, man, we got to do another deal, dude. Yes, this deal sure. doesn't work anymore. So if you're saying it, government, me, then, bureaucracy has zero flexibility, and that's one of the big problems. Nobody will confront the beast, man. Yeah. You guys all need to confront. This goes back to what I said. Go sell your fucking sweatshirt. Yeah. Get your money. Confront the beast that you can solve the first problem, which is I got a money problem. Yeah. Yeah. Confront your friends, all those losers you're hanging out with. One of the things that I posted today, one of the most important things you can do, if once a year... You're not pushing one person out of your to- social to- circle to- to- and bringing one better person in. You're doing something wrong. You're not going to be able. You, you're you doing something wrong. You can't bring new people in without pushing somebody. Else. Yes. The room can only be so big. Yes. Can only be so many people. But in. even more important than put the reason you're pushing people out. It's not like Stalin. You're not doing a purge just for a purge. Stalin used to purge people for no reason. Maybe you are. Well, hope I'm not. I don't want to be Stalin to my friend. Maybe, but maybe, the point is, maybe you purge. There's no way Sometimes that you all purge. people in your life have your best interests at heart. No, no. It's a, There's zero way. They're, they're, even your own family. Even your own their family. Own best interests at heart. Yeah. Well, okay. that's another, self-destruction from, is another from problem. From the age of 16 to 25, I was my biggest enemy. Yeah. I could have purged myself. My mom told my friends, don't spend time with my son. He's trouble. Really? Your own son? My mother. My mother oh, okay. told well, yeah. other people, yeah. Ty, Ty, stay oh. away from Grant. He's trouble. Yeah. So well, let's she talk about right. that for one second. Yeah, yeah. As you make more money, what are some of the common things you found that people are going to have to learn to deal with? One is your own family turning against you. Yeah, they, they think, you know. I've seen that too. Trust me. One per, it might not be your mom. It will yeah, be a yeah. cousin. Over. What, how do you deal with criticism and hate? I just fly. 
You just fly. Yeah, I don't. I say just dance. I say fly, man. Fly. You know, so you, look, you, so look, you look, fly. Look, the haters, haters. I, I believe that the haters not really hating me. They're talking to themselves. Right. They're not talking. Oh, I, Ty Lopez, this or that. Dude, you're talking about his Lambo or his whatever. You're not talking about Ty. You're talking about yourself. Yeah. Most people, most people that hate don't have enough. Like, there's not enough. Cre- you can't create and hate at the same time. Well, and also remember. There's a lot of people who are Machiavellian, psychotic, sociopaths. Though it's been proven, almost everybody who hates, if you post something on your Facebook wall of an accomplishment, you did new job, you get 10 nice comments, one person in your social circle writes, oh, well, good for you. Guarantee you, they have massive psychological problems. Yeah. Send them to the dark triad test. I mean, I, look, look there's, I just think that people, I think that people, you know, I've been in a place where I was envious before, yeah. where I'm like, I can't like what you're doing because I'm envious of it. So my, my first response is, you know, I don't like his cars or I don't like his jacket or I don't like his hair. I mean, yeah. Who would not like your hair? <laughs> somebody, my hair is a some, recurring somebody thing. Is, somebody is losing theirs. Right. Right. So, so why does he wear that jacket? Well, what, what, dude, what jacket do you have on? So haters going to hate. They're just going to do their deal. You know what I tell quit. people? What amazes me is there's actually people who will go log into their YouTube account, go into someone and type a message. Even if I hate somebody, I love my own time enough that there's so, zero. So I'm that's like, that's say, the stupidity hate, level hate, of planet haters, Earth. Haters can't create. Yeah, can't not only can they create, they can't manage time. Yeah. And that if you guy, hate that, somebody, that, you that, move on. Like that hater doesn't have an avatar. Most yeah. of you got have, some of you guys have, this is crazy, like blocked Instagram, private Instagram accounts. Yeah. People Why like to dish, but they private... don't like to take. They'll dish it, but you go on. <laughs> there was a guy who came and said something mean about my 99-year-old grandma, and I posted on Snapchat, I wish we live in a world where I could beat this guy's ass without going to jail. And I, I, I shouldn't have posted that. That's yeah, yeah. Maybe I should have. But this dude basically DM'd me. He goes, I'm going to have to delete my account. 30,000 a model in L.A., dude. He goes, I'm getting death threats. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, at the yeah, end yeah, of the yeah, day, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, he realized that um, it's better to just have a one-track mind, put your blinders on like horse, and move forward. There's always people doing stuff you don't agree with. Yeah. Take the best, like all, Abraham all you, Lincoln all said. All you guys that spend time hating on Donald Trump, man, you're just wasting time and energy. Yeah, Abraham Lincoln said he learned something from everybody, yeah, even if yeah. sometimes it was what not to do. Yeah, There's a yeah, lesson yeah, in that. Yeah, totally, totally. So you I look think, at the I, Kardashians, I, I, you know, you see yeah. Kylie Jenner. Yeah. She just passed 450 million in sales on her lipstick Some kits million, in under 18 months. So people hate on the Kardashians. I'm like, look, they're gonna do what they do. Take your blinders, focus on what the Kardashians do that's created a billion dollar empire from freaking Instagram and Snapchat. That's the lesson for everybody yeah, here. Yeah. There's not enough time to go, oh, well, Kylie's a name of this. I mean, who cares? Dude, Dude if people ain't like killing somebody, out, leaving them you, alone. If you don't like what she did, figure out how to do what you can. Like the guy I was with today, Doug Doring, that runs ABC Mouse. Man, impeccable businessman. What is ABC Mouse? ABC Mouse. ABC Mouse. It's a, it's a learning um, online learning platform okay. for kids. I thought it was related to ABC. ABC like Mouse. NBC. You yeah. came out no. here to Hollywood. You he's say a, ABC. How many countries is he in now? 18. I don't know. He's a multi-billion dollar company. But right. the guy's such a classy dude. Man. Yeah. Nice, humble, five beautiful kids, great marriage, like the whole package. Yeah. Doesn't drink, doesn't drug, you know, gives to his church. Just like, that's what I want. Yeah. I don't need all the, I, I just want to take care of my family, my community. I want to be a good example. The, 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 the thing that I'm going to leave is not the money I made. It's going to be, did I help somebody along the way? Yeah. You know, maybe there'll be a young tie come up, you know, 30 years from now. This is, you know, I studied. Grant maybe Cardone. he's your grandson. Maybe he's your grandson. <laughs> Little tie. Tie, tie. T3. T3. There we go. We got uh, CP3 down in Houston. Now we got T3. And, and, We're uh, going to have GC3. Yeah. You got daughters. Your daughter is yeah. going to run the world. Yeah, yeah. You got the next president. Yeah. Next. Yeah. So I want to wrap up with one final thing. Please. I want you to pick this laptop winner. Okay. I'll pick a laptop winner. Uh, now, Grant, I want, we got, what do we got here we're giving away? MacBook Air, 13 inch, 13.3, 3, 1.8 so, gigahertz. It's so small. Okay. So here's the deal. What did I say about, there's a principle I shared about 
multiple flows of income. There's one most important thing. But I'm not even sure I know what it is. Oh, okay. Okay, see if anybody can get this. What's a this principle that he gave? About, about, I didn't say diversify. Oh, oh. there it is. Never, uh, Wait, what'd they say? He, he said exactly what it Wait, was. Wait, we can go down. The, Tell me this right. Never, never, man. Sean Sahihi. Don't no, let no, go. No, not, not that one. No, not right here. there. Oh, Whistle C 89, dude. Whistle. Whistle. Never go at Nizzle 89 Whistle, on YouTube. And, and, and NED, dog. NED. No, NED. NED. You can win. Whistle, drizzle. You can go to Grant's channel. Where can people find you, Grant? Best place. Uh, best place is, you know, just probably Google search me. If, you've never, if you don't know who I am, you should go do a You got GrantCardone.com, too? GrantCardone.com. Um, and you can write on his Insta NED if and you but, want You to. know, I'm giving a million dollars away here in the next, over the next six years. Is it in 100 right? grand bars? 10 of these? It's cash. No, it's real oh, cash. Okay, cash. We've given out 135000 in cash already. Go follow him if you want uh, a chance at some of a million bucks. All you got to do is post an image of me and tie it together. Okay? Or me by myself. Who's got the best hair? <laughs> How old are you, dude? I'll say how old I am. Well, you Grant, won't tell me, right? Let me tell you something about okay. Grant that His I've learned. His beard looks like my hair. Okay. Let me tell you about Grant. Say, so look. Grant exudes you have fun with me. You have fun with me, confidence. Though, right? So the, one of the lessons, you got to learn to read between the lines. Grant is a confident man, and there's power in confidence. Yeah, 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 yeah. So well, let's and, end with and, that. And by the way, confidence can be learned. Okay? It can be yeah. learned. So. Your, one of my mentors says yeah, your I've, confidence I've, I've, let me, let is your just, confidence. You yeah, got to be confident at something. Get good at something. You'll get confident. Com confident to be confident. I want to bring. I want to bring your audience. Okay, yes. A sales program. Yep. That's affordable. That they yep. can use and that we can really change a bunch of lives with. We're going. We're working on a joint project. So be watching for this. Hey, will you say that on Snapchat? I didn't even know he's going to give me a, a compliment. Can, I, can you do it twice? I don't think I can do it twice. That's right. I this, don't think I can do that twice. The second one, Grant has a lot of confidence. He yeah. can compliment you once per yeah. lifetime. I don't think I can do another one. Can I do another one? Did I just want to tell you I got mad? You know, wait, wait for the light. I, I just, what do you mean take one? It's going to be the only take, okay? The second time, I ain't doing this shit three times, okay? Look, I got mad uh, admiration for what you've done online and the business you've created and, the, you know, the people know you. I appreciate it. So, so I, I hope to be just like you one day. <laughs> You're already past me, man. Well, good. Well, thank you guys so much. We had a ton of people on here. And uh, for Grant's audience, for my audience, go check out his stuff. Follow him on Insta. And when you follow him, be like, yo, Ty sent me. Yeah, yeah. Send, do that. You know? So little Ty sent me. And we'll go little from there. Little Ty. Little Ty. That sounded good. All right, everybody. Peace.